How long have you been doing this? Since uh, 2017, coincidentally or not. And what's so good about the Constitution of the United States of America? What's so good about it is it provides rights for people, for instance, voting rights, which are now being threatened in uh, many, many states by Republican legislatures. We need to get back to protecting voting rights and drop the filibuster because of, that's a racist relic to uh, prevent majority rule, and we need to um, uh, get voting rights back reestablished. Hmm. And when I give these out, I tell people to go to page 47, Know Your Rights. There's a Know Your Rights section written by the ACLU in here. Excellent for young drivers. All right, I'll take one of those. Thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Yay! They got right here, and they got on it. Day. They got right on it. We uh, have some banners over here. For some people, we'd like people to get these banners. There's some more banners over here. Uh, there are two right here. The banners should be in people's hands oh, yeah. and not in on the ground. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Give me a second. I want to thank Peace, Peace, Sister Baskerville. That's Sister Baskerville. Now, if I don't recognize some of y'all, that's because you got masks. Yeah, so you know, I, there, so I can't uh, recognize everybody with these masks on. It's it's funny. I went somewhere the other day and I didn't have my pop sweatshirt on. People didn't know who I was. <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> they said, we, Larry Hale's supposed to speak here today. We don't see him. That is a true story. <laughs> but um, what we're going to do, uh, we're here today um, on this, the actual birthday of Dr. Martin Luther King. Give Dr. King a big hand. And Dr. King, as you all know, was a minister of the gospel and in his tradition and in respect for his tradition because the people's organization for progress we re respect all people's faiths and beliefs creeds etc but since dr king was a minister of the gospel i'm going to ask reverend roundtree to open our program today with a word of prayer um, his family his family I can't, wait a minute, hold on here. I'm going to try this again, Brother Ham. Peace, family. Peace. All right, power to the people. Power to the people. All right, power to the people. Power. Let us pray with power. Father God, we come before you this day as we stand on this corner in front of this Lincoln Monument, thanking you first for the visionary Brother Larry Ham, thanking you for blessing him to continue to fight, to continue to come out and have us come together and gather for the right for the people, for the power that the people have, they need to recognize that they need to use it. We thank you, oh God, for this is the day that you have made. And as we celebrate our Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday on this day, we can't celebrate without praying for the proper legislation to be passed. We, we can't celebrate without people coming together knowing that our voting rights have to be what they need to be for all people. That is that you can't take them. You can't mess with them. And we have to stand, God, as a people. So give us the will with it all to continue to fight this battle. Even though we know the battle is yours, we stand firm to do what we need to do as a people with the power that you've given us. So we ask that you bless this day. Bless our actions. Bless our city. Bless these people, and as you bless each and every one of us, Lord, help us to do what we need to do for the sake of the people. Let us stand united, for united we stand, and divided we fall. So we thank you right now, God, for this opportunity. We thank you for the fathers. We thank you, God, for the mayor Barakas. 
thank you for those who are gathered under the sound of my voice. And most of all, God, we thank you for giving us this day. We thank you. Now as you bless this event, we know it's blessed. And as we go forward, we believe you for the victory for that voters' rights legislation. We thank you now in the name of some who call you Jesus, in the name of some who call you Allah, in the name of some who call you Yahweh, in the name of some who call you Elohim, in the name of some who call you Joshua or Jehovah, but you're our God and our creator. Amen, Amen, and I say, Amen, Amen, and I say, Power to the people. Thank you, Reverend. Give her a big hand. Reverend Roundtree. Uh, Steve, can you bring your banner up here past legislation? Because that's really the theme. It underscores the theme. Steve, where you at? You got your past legislation? Yeah, no, not same day. Past voting rights legislation. Now, bring that up. Oh, that's not Steve, but that's good enough. <laughs> you look better than Steve, as a matter of fact. <laughs> All right. All right. Power to the people. Long live Martin Luther King. Long live Dr. King. Long live Dr. King. Martin Luther King. Live like him. Dare to struggle. Dare to win. Martin Luther King. Live like him. Dare to struggle. Dare to win. Why are we here today on this, the coldest day of the year? We're here today because this day, January 15th, is the actual birthday of Martin Luther King. We, the United States holiday in celebration of Dr. King is held on the third Monday in January, and that will be the day after tomorrow, but his actual birthday is January 15th. And we're here because it is the birthday of Dr. King, but we are not here to celebrate. This is not a Martin Luther King celebration. This is a Martin Luther King protest for justice. That's why we're here today. This is not a celebration. This is not a protest. And although we're here today to point out the problems and the contradictions and the challenges that face us today, we're not here to commiserate. We're not here just to talk about how, how bad things are. We're here today to talk about what we're going to do to make it better. That's why we're here today. We're here today not to commiserate. But we're here today to act for justice and to call on the institutions that run this society to change their racist and oppressive ways. This is the Martin Luther King March for Voting Rights. That is the theme this year because our voting rights are under attack. In fact, this is the most intense attack on voting rights since the Jim Crow era. And some people think that we're scared and that we're cowering and that we're going to let them do whatever it is they want to do. But we're here today we're gonna, to say we're going to fight them. And we're going to fight them for every inch of ground in the struggle for justice. Their attack is not going to be made unanswered, and we're here today to answer that attack. This demonstration has been endorsed today. The demonstration was called by the People's Organization for Progress, but the demonstration has been endorsed by the North Branch of the NAACP, by the New Jersey Industrial Union Council, by the New Brunswick Area Branch of the NAACP, by Newark Communities for Accountable Policing, NCAP, by the American Civil Liberties Union, 
by the North Branch of the NAACP, by Surge showing up for racial justice in New Jersey, women voters of New Jersey, our revolution Essex, and the Ironbound Community Corporation. Give them all a hand. Those are the organizations that said that they are co-sponsors. Now, I'm going to outline the demands, and we're going to let a few people speak. But I got to say to the speakers, it's 18 degrees out here today. We can't be out here too long. We don't need vaulting oratory today. We need for you to tell us what action we need to take. So I'm going to limit all the speakers that we call now. We're going to have some in the beginning, and we're going to have some in the end. But we want to get the march on the way because it's sub-20 degrees out here, and some people have been out here since 1130. Let me just go over the demands that we have today. We're here today to call for the passing of voting rights legislation. We demand that the Senate pass the Freedom to Vote Act. We demand that the Senate pass the For the People Act. And we demand that the Senate pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act. And we call on the Senate to modify or abolish the filibuster so this legislation can be passed. We call upon the state legislature of New Jersey to expand voting rights here. We are here today to demand same day registration in the state of New Jersey. If people are unregistered on election day, they should be able to register and vote on election day. We're here today to demand the return of civics education to our public schools so that our young people know how the political system works and, how, and so that they can be critical of public policy. We demand one of our long-term demands. We demand the abolition of the Electoral College and the direct election of the President of the United States by the people of this country. But we're also marching today for racial and social economic justice. We're marching today for an end. If you listen to Dr. King's I Have a Dream speech, in that speech, twice he mentions police brutality. So we're here today to demand that the New Jersey legislature pass those bills that would establish, that would enable municipalities to establish police review boards with subpoena power. Those are bills A4656 and S2963. We call on day, today, we call on the Congress to pass the George Floyd for the People Act and the Breathe Act to reform policing in the United States. We call today on the New Jersey State Legislature to pass Bill A711 S32, which would establish a reparations commission, reparations for those who were the descendants of those enslaved in the United States. And we call on Congress to pass H.R. 40, to establish a National Reparations Commission. We demand reparations for the descendants of those that were enslaved in the United States. But more than that, we demand an end to poverty wages in the United States. $7.25 is a slave wage. We demand the immediate doubling of that. We demand a $15 minimum wage in the United States immediately, not gradually, immediately. And more than that, we demand a living wage. $15 an hour was good about 10 years ago. <laughs> we really need about $20 an hour right now. 
We need a living wage in the United States. And lastly, we're here to demand the passage of the PRO Act, which would facilitate the organization of labor unions in this country. One of the reasons that people are suffering so much in the United States is because the United States is the least organized of the industrial nations in the world today. Only about 11% of labor is organized. That's one of the reasons we have so much poverty, so much low income, and so much low wealth in this country, because labor is not organized. And Dr. King was a champion of labor. The movement that we build must have labor at the center of it. Dr. King was in Memphis when he was assassinated trying to help sanitation workers get a union there. So the workers struggle and the struggle for racial, social, economic justice, human and civil rights is one struggle. So those are major demands today. There are other demands, but we're trying to get this march on the road today. So. I want to ask, is uh, Deborah Gregory here yet? Is Deborah Gregory here? Give her a hand. Deborah Gregory from the NAACP. Give her a hand. Make it quick. Make it quick. Make it quick. Make it quick and make it plain. <laughs> Power to the people. So um, one of the things that the King family has requested is that rather than we march and rally on Monday, that we contact legislators and we cont or, or either come to uh, Washington, D.C. to join them. So I want to give you a number, but I want to say this first. When I was in, when I was a student at Seton Hall University in the early 70s, there was talk then about rolling back the, the Voting Rights Act of 1965, right? But being the youthful, arrogant person that I was at that time, I was like, oh, that, there's no way that could possibly happen. No way, no shape. I said it loud, I said it often, and here I am now I stand before you as an elder some 50 years later, and we are fighting for Voting Rights Act protection. We have to stay ever vigilant. We can't think that because we accomplished something that is going to stay and remain in place. We must stay vigilant at all times. It doesn't mean that we are paranoid schizophrenic. It means that we are holding our elected officials and ourselves accountable for our own progress. That's what we have to do. So I just want to give you this telephone number. And so what I did was, rather than you know call Booker and then call Menendez because those are the people that we need to call to end it to to have them have the courage of conviction to aggressively stop the other senators from these filibuster uh, uh, rules and, and stall tactics. So here is the number. This is the number for the switchboard. And so we're being asked to flood the switchboard and to demand and urge senators, our senators, but senators, to pass the John Lewis Voting Rights Act bill and that freedom to vote that uh, Mnuchin came up with, to pass both of them. So the number, and I'm going to say it more than once, is 202-224-3121. That's 202-224-3121. It's real easy. And you can either leave a message at the switchboard or you can ask to be connected directly to Senators Booker or Menendez. What number on your Website? Yeah, I'll put it there. I'll put it on our Facebook page so that you can go there. And I'll even put it on my personal page so that Monday and Tuesday, this is what we need to do. Tuesday, they will be in session. And we need to make our presence known. We have to stay vigilant. 
And so uh, Dr. King asked that question, where do we go from here, chaos or community? Chaos, which is where we're headed with this fascist government with people trying to employ a fascist government, that's the chaos, or community by protecting our voting rights, registering to vote, and then getting out to vote at every single election, staying ever vigilant. Power to the people. Power to the people. We're going to ask uh, Brother Charlie Hall from the Retail Workers Union here in Essex County, give him a big hand. The retail workers, those are the food service workers and the clerks and the stores and the cashier people. Give him a big hand, Charlie Hall, president. Power to the people. I'm, I'm going to be quick. Um, we know what's happening. We saw last year what happened to the, 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 the in, in Washington where they came to kill. All right, they're organized, they're serious, they're well financed. And vigilant we must be, we must keep making all of the noise we possibly can. They want to, and they are effectively doing it, turning the hands on the clock back. We can't let that happen. They've been mad ever since. We elected Obama, they got madder. All right, so now we must regroup and retool. This is a... Uh, serious business when states all around our country is figuring out ways to keep people from voting. They want to silence us. And those of you that play golf, they want to mulligan. They want to do it all over again and make things like it used to be. All right. So my hat's off to everybody here. I guess I, I see a couple of labor leaders out there, but we, we must stand with civil rights leaders, religious leaders, and we us must all come together. You know, I want to see pretty soon that this crowd extends all the way down a couple of lights. And we can do it by building coalitions. So I'm with you, and every bit of strength or finance, whatever I can do to make sure that we're relevant, we're heard, local 108, retail wholesale department store union, Essex West Country Labor Council, we will all be there. So thank you, brothers and sisters. Thank more you. power to the people. Well, we're just going to hear from a couple more people. We're going to march, and then we're going to hear from the rest of the people. I want to get this march going. But we have one mayor here today. Are there any? All the mayors here today raise their hand. Mayors. We got two mayors here. The two mayors, we got the mayor of Hillside and the mayor of Maplewood, right? Come on up, Mayor Hillside, Mayor Maplewood. Introduce yourself, Mayor. Power to the people. We stand strong behind justice. And we can't have justice when we can't control our own community. I am proudly the Mayor of Hillside. My name is Dahlia Vertrees. I'm a member of Local 68, IUOE, of the Building Trade. And I grew up right here in New Jersey, but I went to college at the University of Arkansas. Now, understand how deep that is. I grew up in Jersey, the daughter of a police officer and a nurse, right here in Newark. And I went to the University of Arkansas, okay, predominantly white institution, with a history of violence, but also a history of admitting the first black person in a southern university. So while there is pain, there is also joy, but we cannot have that joy unless we understand the problems and the ills in our system. When people are trying to take away your voting rights, they are essentially telling you they do not want you to control your own community. And it's interesting that we're standing right here in front of Abraham Lincoln, because despite his past and his and his complication as a historical figure, as a statesman, he died for black people that had a right to vote. And a lot of people don't know that, and they don't respect the fact that when he said that he wanted to extend black suffrage with the help of our brother Frederick Douglass, that that's when John Wilkes Booth said, you want to give the nigga the suffrage? That'll be the last speech you give. And he made good on that promise and killed Abraham Lincoln. 
But I'll tell you what, we need more of those Abraham Lincolns today. All of these people that are cutting and running because things are getting too hard and stepping away from their roles and responsibilities for the elected office that they took an oath to give, we need to make sure that we are either pressuring them to do what they promised that they're going to do, or we need to replace them. And we need more people on the bench that are willing to stand up for the principles of this country. And you can stand here and say that you don't want people who live in these communities to control their own communities. Then that in and of itself is un-American and you don't deserve to be here. So I did not win re-election in Hillside by people standing on the sidelines. I did the work, I went door to door, and I sat with young people that didn't understand their right to vote and got many new voters in Hillside to stand up and understand that their existence, their livelihood, their quality of life, that their black lives don't matter unless you have political and economic power. All these people want to march and talk about Black Lives Matter, but you don't want to vote. That is unacceptable. You have to vote. You have to control your communities. You have to have a voice. You have to let people know your demand, because then you will not have power. I don't want to hear about Black Lives Matter when we only show up when people die. We only show up when people die. That's too late. We got to step up now. We got to have our voice said now. You got to listen to our history now and you got to know your history. Don't be lazy about it. Walk out there. Come to your meetings. Get your notice. Get your sense. Get your history acknowledged. And we will prevail. It's not enough to complain. It's not enough to march. Words don't matter. Power can seize nothing without a demand. Never did. Never, did. Never, will. Never will. Asa Philip Randolph Strong. Let's give it up for the mayor. I can't follow that. Come on now. That's not fair. <laughs> hey, y'all. I'm Mayor Dean Davis from Maplewood. Long live Dr. King. Yay! Power to the people. Yay! And we have another mayor here, a former mayor of Maplewood. Come on up here, Mayor Vic DeLuca. Come up here, Vic. Come on. Come on. Vic has a long tradition of organizing for the people, the Ironbound, right here in Newark. So listen. This is all about activating and agitating in our communities. That's what this is all about. I work in housing in, for the state of New Jersey. And what I see every day right here in this city, I see BIPOC communities under attack. And they are under attack because of poverty, y'all, lack of economic mobility, lack of any level of representation for the undocumented and underdocumented, and certainly people being left out of the process. So we can talk and we can march all we want, and we do this every year, but the idea is to activate and agitate all of our communities to come together to realize the dream. We are still realizing the dream, right? We are not there yet. So I don't care who you are, Latino, gay, straight, white, black. Dr. King was a man for all the people. And I stand here as an LGBTQ person elected in government in this great state of ours and i tell you there are lgbtq folks who are not surviving right here in newark because of what because of poverty keeping them down so we have work to do let's get this march started but let's get a little more inspiration from this amazing man right here come on man Hey, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, both Mayor. Look, folks, this is about our work. We need to organize. We need to be out there. And we need to stay together. And as Charles Hall said, we need to build coalitions. Let's not let them divide us. That's what they want to do. We need to stay strong. We need to support each other. And Larry, we need to march and get moving here. <laughs> All right, let's go. One more person, then we're going to march. 
We're going to hear from everybody else. Bill Payne, former assemblyman. I'm asking Bill Payne to come up because Bill Payne brought Dr. King to Newark, New Jersey to speak when he was a student at Rutgers University. Bill Payne was with Mega Evers. He got pictures. Now, he can't show the pictures now, but when we get back, he can show the pictures. But I want Bill Payne to say a few words. He brought Dr. King and Malcolm X to this city. I'm not going to take up. I'm not going to take up any time yet. Larry was right that uh, I had the opportunity to bring Dr. King to uh, Southside High School. As a matter of fact, I don't know if any of you are old enough to remember when this school was called the Southside High School. But Dr. King came and he spoke, and on that same day, Dr. King was in town in the state of New Jersey, and that Dr. King right. came to Southside High School at our invitation. And if you, uh, those of you who were around at that time. Dr. King ended up his day at Abyssinia Baptist Church. I don't know if anybody here knows where Abyssinia Church is, but Dr. King was just three to, right around the corner, and Dr. King spoke there. I had the opportunity of knowing Dr. King when he was first introduced to the NAACP in 1956 in San Francisco, California. And I have to tell you a short story. There was Dr. King was 29 years old. You know, he started that bus, that uh, boycott. And what happened when he got to the NAACP convention in San Francisco, Thurgood Marshall and uh, the rest of the people who were the old heads there said that this young man is not going to come to our convention and speak. And we said that uh, those of us who were youth in the organization decided that if Dr. King didn't speak, then nobody speaks. Well, we, Dr. King spoke, and the rest of them appreciated it. So like I said, I had the honor of being able to work with him, but we still have to be here. Today is his birthday, and I'm glad to be able to celebrate it. Um, there, those of us who did not have the opportunity, Dr. King gave his life, as you know, and his last stop was right here in the city of Newark when he was, before he went down to Memphis, Tennessee to work with people. I've been trying for a long, long time to get our history in, taught in the state of New Jersey so that our young people would know the contributions that we made, that our young people know that that traffic light came out of a black man's mind. They need to know that pen penicillin, et cetera, came from. We need to do it, and the legislation is the Amistad legislation which I introduced 20 years ago in the state of New Jersey. And even though we've been fighting to get it, there are people that look like me, some who look like me, who say that we don't need that. I leave me, let you know that we need the legislators come here, let them know that the Amistad legislation must be introduced so that our children will know that this country is ours too. And I think that now it's long overdue. Thank you all for being here. Let's see if we can get out here and get the heat started. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Give him a big hand, Bill Payne. All right, y'all ready to march? Yeah, All right, this is the lead banner. Uh, Salim, who's gonna take it? Send, go ahead, go down to uh, to Zaid. Go down to the the street pole, the light pole right there. Hey. Yes. We go in the broad market. Broad market and back. It's too cold to go to the federal building. Two by two, two by two. Bar number two. Go to struggle. Bar number two. I'm right, man. Martin Luther King, dare to struggle. Martin Luther King, dare to struggle. Martin Luther King, live like him, dare to struggle, dare to win. Martin Luther King, dare to struggle. Martin Luther King, dare to struggle. Dare to struggle. Dare. No, y'all, when, when I say dare to struggle, y'all say dare to win. <laughs> when I say live like him, you say dare to struggle. All right, we good? I'm oh, sorry. Let's get in shape here. Two by two, everybody. Please don't punch up. Two by two. Oh, shit. Must be the cold. Must be the cold. Martin Luther King, dare to struggle. Martin Luther King, live like him. Dare to struggle, dare to win. Martin Luther King, dare to struggle. Martin Luther King, live like him. Dare to struggle, dare to win. Martin Luther King, dare to struggle. Martin Luther King, live like him. Dare to struggle, dare to win. Martin Luther King, dare to struggle. 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 Dare
No justice! 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 No what do we want? Voting rights! When do we want it? Now! What do we want? Voting rights! When do we want it? Now! Take them out and willing to take you out. That's cool. That's cool. So we need to 
warm up, we need to rally up, and we need to be the change that we need to see. I'm of the age that leaves my generation, the last generation, to see that giant who was only about this tall, but who was a giant amongst us, the last generation to see him alive. That leaves upon us an enormous responsibility to uphold that legacy and all that that generation sacrificed for. And I'm saying here to all of our young, all of our young, I don't care how pathetic some of these people are in office that make you want to hold your nose and tell them to go to hell, it is important for you to maximize this thing called the ballot. If it wasn't important, they wouldn't be taking it from you. If it wasn't important, they wouldn't kill you over there. They have killed us over the ballot. And I'll say it I'll wind with this. When Martin Luther King was killed, the Black Panther Party went through its largest growth spurt and replaced him as being the number one target as a threat to the internal security of the United States. Well, the one thing that the Panthers represented that we must appreciate. The ballot was not won by nonviolence alone. And we are dealing with a beastly racist fascist enemy who is willing to use violence to put us back in our place. And if they were willing to go there, some of us need also to be ready to go there to push their asses back. We will not go back. We will not take this backwards turn of history. We were at the crossroads, and at the crossroads, the only way to go is forward. And we go forward united, a united front for justice, a united front to make this place what we say we want it to be. And we need to do that, and we need to be willing to do that, if need be, by any means necessary. So give yourselves a round of applause. All power to the people. We are the ones we have been waiting for. Cliff Barrington, Cliff Barrington, come on up, say a few words. We're going to leave in a few, everybody hold tight, we're going to leave in a minute. This is Cliff Arrington. Cliff Arrington was at the 1963 March on Washington. Give him a big hand. He was there. I was there as an infant. It's so good to be out here today with all you beautiful, wonderful folks. You folks got heart, you got determination, you got Kohana grit. That's the kind of people we need in the struggle for justice and equality. Without that, we will not get anywhere. We will get further down. So hang tough, hang strong, take care of yourself, remain in the fight. All right. All right. And lastly, I'm going to call on Bill Davis because he's the closest one to me. <laughs> Bill Davis from Piscataway, New Jersey, our Central Jersey leader, POP leader in Central Jersey. Power to the people. Power to the people. Come on, say it now. Power to the people. Power to the people. Power to the people. Our brother, Frederick Douglass. His profound words still ring true. So we have to continue to demand justice in order to get it. And as long as we are standing on the shoulders of our ancestors, we call Frederick, Harry, Fanny, Lou, all the great ancestors, Ida B. Wells, you can call all those names. Those are the shoulders that we're standing on. That's the legacy that we're here to honor. And so we think about King. You really think about the fact that the brother was a genius, the brother was courageous, and the brother was never able to be compromised. And so when we honor his legacy today, his legacy, Malcolm's legacy, all Rosa Parks, it is up to us to pass the baton forward to the young folks that's here. And I'm hoping that they're going to recognize the work that we put in and take that baton and take it to the next level. Power to the people. Power to the people. Have y'all had enough speakers? <laughs> I want to thank everybody for coming out today, and we will keep you informed. The Voting Rights Legislation, the Freedom to Vote Act, the For the People Act, and the John Lewis
Voting Rights Act will come up for a vote this week. We're not sure what the outcome will be. We know it doesn't look good because unfortunately we have these people mansion and cinema that won't vote with the rest of the Democratic caucus. I mean, I would... I, it, it's clear that they are not representing the will of the people. So we're probably going to have to have a mobilization. We'll probably have to have another mobilization after this week, and we hope it will be a larger mobilization than this one. But once again, Deborah Gregory asked me to remind everybody to call the Capitol switchboard, 202-224-3121. 202-224-3121. Tell your senators to pass the Voting Rights Act, the, the um, Freedom to Vote Act, the For the People Act, and the John Lewis Voting Rights Act. Those are the three bills we want Senate to pass on voting rights. Here in New Jersey, we want same-day voter registration. If it's election day and a person's not registered to vote, they should be able to register to vote at the polling place and cast their ballot. We want reparations for African, for those descendants of African people that were enslaved in this country. We want Congress to pass H.R. 40, and we want the New Jersey legislature to pass the state Reparations Commission bill here in New Jersey. The minimum wage right now, $7.25, is a slave wage. We want, at a minimum, $15 an hour, but really what we need in the United States is a living wage. You know what a living wage would be? A living wage would be about $33 an hour here in Essex County. That would be a living wage. That would be a living wage. We want a living wage here in New Jersey. That's right. That's right. We want an end to student debt. If they can cut trillions of dollars of taxes for the rich, they can end, they can forgive all student loans here in the United States and not burden these young people. They'll never be able to have the kind of life they should have if they're burdened down with these student loans. We need Medicare for all in this country. It's a damn shame we live in the richest country in the world. People scared to go to a doctor and dentist because they can't afford it. We need universal health care in this country. Is is anyone here from the um, Rodwell Spivey family? Is the, is the lawyer here? Because I know Jaquiel can't speak, but Monique is here, Monique Rodwell. We're fighting for justice for the Rodwell Spivey brothers and the Rodwell Spivey family. They're under attack. We had a court session uh, this week. The next court session will be February 14th. We want everybody to come to court, fill up the courtroom, February 14th. And we want Justin released. That's uh, Justin, right? Justin's down there in Essex County. I mean, how you going to charge somebody and hold them in jail for a whole year? I mean, the Constitution says you're supposed to have a speedy trial, right? The trial by your peers. There's a young man named Justin. He's down there. He's one of the brothers. He's down there. He's been there and there a whole year and haven't been to trial. That's a damn shame. And we also want justice for Carl Dorsey. Been a year since Carl Dorsey was shot and killed here in Newark. We want justice for all the victims of police brutality in this country. And we especially want justice for Breonna Taylor. Yeah. We're not going to let Breonna, Breonna Taylor be forgotten about. You know, they, they killed that woman and nobody has gone to jail or gone to trial. Now, there's, there's something wrong with that. So we want justice for Breonna, Breonna Taylor. And we want uh, the PRO Act passed. The PRO Act would make it very it would facilitate the organization of labor unions. I've been around, I've been to different countries to speak. In every country I go to, there's a close connection between the struggle for racial justice and the labor movement. Every country I've been to, it's the same thing. I was down there speaking in uh, Bermuda. It's no different, it's just the same movement. 
because that's a black country, Bermuda. So we want to thank everybody for coming out today. If you're not a member of an organization, we urge you to join the People's Organization for Progress. And if you don't join POP, join an organization that's fighting for justice. Don't just join any organization. Join an organization that's actively fighting for justice. You know, join the NAACP. And we got a good NAACP here in Newark under the leadership of Deborah Gregory. Give her a big hand. Deborah Gregory. And the New Brunswick branch that enjoys Star March. You know, there's, there's some fighting branches of the NAACP uh, here in New Jersey. And there's a close relationship between the NAACP and the People's Organization for Progress. We try to work with everybody. We want to be everybody's partner. If, you, if you're in the fight for justice, we want to be your partner. Because can't nobody do this by themselves. And no one group got all the answers. We got to have a united front to turn this thing around.